We are eco-faith recovery, and we are recovering. I'm recovering from loss of relationship. I am recovering from the aspects of my way of life that are detrimental to our future. An unwillingness to be involved. What I'm recovering from is the sense of isolation, the sense of disempowerment, the sense that the problem is too big, that there's nothing I can do about it. I'm recovering to a vision of myself as connected to other leaders who can make a difference. Community Carbon as an initiative works to rebalance carbon to where it was meant to be um, in proportion to how it was meant to be for ourselves and for future generations. In this way, we are different than climate actions that pose to simply slow down or stop the ticking clock of our climate crisis. Community Carbon is literally rolling back the clock. The reason I am so excited is that this is a bottoms up effort. It's not a top down. Top down efforts get they get locked up because they become political and they're too expensive. But this, I think if we looked at, at the return on investment, has the potential to be very manageable, fairly cheap, and actionable. We already have a lot of knowledge. And by working together and combining that knowledge and committing to learning more all the time, we just exponentially multiply what we can do. We have this routine, we have these teams that go around and Bev and I take pictures and Carol measures and and, and I measure and Eric measure. measures and then after all of this information is gathered, we dig a hole and look at the dirt. We collect a sample and we take it over to a lab. See this all the fine yeah. Yeah, yeah. fluffy stuff? Mm -hmm. That's is that, is soil that, the that needs <laughs> some clay to become soil, it's, it's humus. When this stuff degrades, it degrades with the microorganisms in here, and it makes that fine stuff. Humus this can't develop soil because it can't get through the, the plastic. Right, right, right. So this is a place where we would visualize having a soil garden where the homeowner would come in and uh, cover this with compost and mulch and the opportunity of trying to grow more and more uh, soil in the spot. And the reason this is ideal for us is because it's right along the street. So the neighbor comes from here or over there and he said, well, what's this sign about a soil garden? And you say, well, let me explain this to you. They're about a place where you're actually growing soil in your yard and you can actually plant some shrubs in here. This is a good place. We're sequestering carbon in our soils in our yard. Not all soil gardens are going to have a place like this where there's already uh, mulch. M most will not. Most will be on top of grass. What many of us would suggest is to put a layer of, of cardboard or a couple of layers of cardboard over your grass or vegetative area, wet that good, then put the um, compost, and, compost and, mulch. and mulch on top of it. And the benefit of the cardboard is it'll kill the grass, um, but as it decomposes, it's food. It's food for the microbes and microorganisms. What you want to do is get a three inches total, and probably that's half and half of compost and red fur. And the way you do that is you measure the width and the length. You could do what I did and say, I have this much area and I want to cover it with three inches right, of mulch. Right. How much do I need? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the guys at the uh, uh, supplier get those questions all the time and they can take the road. And then you're encouraging people also to plant plants in that area? And the thing is, it's the plants that, that are sucking the carbon out of the air. But they, the plants need healthy soil to grow, and native plants because they have so many benefits. It's our planet, our problem. 
but we're all in this together. And I'm really convinced that we can do something. And I know historically that we've done a lot.